Okay, so the first thing is selling has always been about making a positive difference in the lives of others, both personally and professionally. If that's not what you're doing in selling, you know, I would argue that you're doing, you're doing the wrong thing. Um, I'm not a fan of the Wolf of Wall Street movie. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a big fan of the Pursuit of Happiness movie. You know, the, the, the truth is we need to find a way we need to do the work to go and help people. So it's not about making a sale. It's not about crushing quota. Um, it's all about making a positive difference in the life of the customer. And our customers right now are scared. They're wondering about their own job security. They're wondering whether the projects they're managing, uh, the division of the company that they're running, uh, the initiative that they're driving, they're wondering whether that's going to continue. And I'm going to explain in a moment the lens through which their boss and their board is looking at projects and initiatives to decide what they're going to do. And the other thing here is that sales success has always been the fuel of free market economies. Um, you know, everyone in America especially knows this to be true. Uh, and they've spread, you know, positive capitalism around the world. Um, but the reality is, as we come out of the medical crisis and deal with the lingering re result of an economic crisis, you know, without doubt, we are right now today in the Great Recession. This is the worst economic time since the Great Depression. Uh, and as with all uh, serious problems in the past with economies, it's the activities of salespeople and it's those that are willing to innovate and invest that have really driven economies forward. The first thing I want to say, because there's going to be a lot in this presentation today and a lot of tips about how we can really find a way to break through, but I just really want to start with something really important. You know, there's someone that I respect enormously in America, a guy called Mike Weinberg, and I receive his newsletter that he sends out to salespeople. I'd encourage you to subscribe to it. And Mike talks with compassion and great common sense about what we need to be doing at the moment. But, you know, in my mind, and Mike and I are aligned, the most important thing we need to do for our existing clients is make sure that they're okay. I'd really encourage you to phone them and don't try and sell them anything. Don't ask about your deal. Don't try and close them, right? Just be a really good human being and have empathy. Uh, everyone is socially distancing, but that doesn't mean that they need to be socially isolated. Uh, we are so blessed that we live in an era where we're able to really get connected. And I know social media has driven a lot of craziness in the world, but it can also drive incredible connectedness. So call up all of your existing customers and your existing prospects, uh, those potential clients that you've started to build a good relationship with. Just call them and ask if they're okay. Ask them, is there anything that you can do to help them? It's really important and do it without an agenda. Um, in the coming months, you know, I think this will last for well beyond a, a year as far as the lingering effects go, but people's mental health is going to suffer as unemployment uh, rises and people are anxious. So make sure for all of those people in your life, you're making sure that they're okay. So let's talk about what's really going on uh, in the midst of all of this craziness. You know, in America, I've, you know, we've all seen the, the images on the news of people lining up around the block to stockpile handguns. Uh, in Australia, we've had the crazy riots of uh, people fighting over toilet paper. We've had people hoarding uh, as if it's the great zombie apocalypse. And, you know, there obviously is a whole lot of shock and paralysis initially. I've seen uh, in the last few weeks, I saw sellers move from being in the office to working out of home. And I saw a lot of people check out of the office, not just physically, but also mentally. But let me tell you what I've seen in the last week. Um, I've seen people start to get back on the phone and the incredible thing is that people are answering their cell phones, their mobile phones, they're answering them at higher rates than ever in the history of the world, I think. Uh, my son is actually a sales development rep for a North American tech company. Uh, he lives in his own place, but he's had to move back home with us just during the daytime to do work uh, because we've got really good internet here. So I've been with him while he's been working and hearing him on the phone and he's getting engagement like never before. He's decided to really step up and actually really make an effort to phone people and he's starting to drive really good conversations. So uh, the, the thing here is to recognize that it's going to be okay. We're going to recover. People are talking about what we're in right now as being the new normal. It's not, it's just temporary, but people are answering the phone. So as a seller, talk to them and I'm going to explain what you should be talking about. Uh, but people will recognize that we need to adapt to survive and then thrive. And as the new normal emerges, there'll just be a lot more remote selling. So I'll explain how you can do that. 
The very first thing that you need to address for yourself as a seller or as a leader is mindset. You need to make the decision that you're not gonna you know, curl up into a ball in the corner, that you're going to step up and that you're going to improve the value that you provide people. It's incredibly important. We need to learn to execute at new levels. Uh, in working at home, you know, with a lot of empty offices now working from home, people will be okay if they hear your kids in the background. It'll help, help create even more human connection. You know, I had someone say to me the other day that they're getting unbelievable meetings with really senior people. They're phoning them up and saying, where do you live? I'll drive to you. Let's meet at your local coffee shop where we can still get takeaway coffee. I'll buy you a takeaway coffee. We'll socially distance, but let's go for a walk and have a chat. Or we'll find a park bench on where we can sit a, a, a meter and a half apart. And they're getting meetings with senior people because people are starting to get cabin fever. So we really need to be innovative. You know, there's a company in Australia that manufactured gin, distilled spirits, and they pivoted and they're making hand sanitizer for people and doing incredibly well. So people are deciding to adapt as a way of thriving. Uh, the human spirit is indomitable. Uh, and if we adopt the right mindset, we can absolutely succeed. Let me just move now to what's happening inside virtual boardrooms. Uh, most boardrooms are empty, but obviously those people are still meeting online. For every initiative and project uh, that's on foot inside organizations, the senior executives are absolutely having a hard look at everything and they're putting a lens over projects. They're making really tough decisions on how they can cut costs. Um, and it's easy to portray capitalism as being brutal, uh, but the truth is all good hearted uh, economic initiatives in society and within companies have to be funded. They all have to be funded and people have to make really tough decisions to ensure the survival of their organization and for the people that remain. So the way they're gonna make the decision is this, you know, in selling, we often talk about a lot of things as if they're benefits. We talk about attributes of how we operate. We talk about things the client could be doing differently as if it's a benefit. But the truth is it's only a benefit for the organization if you can measure it in terms of dollars or percentages, or if it moves the needle on one of those strategic objectives or, or key result areas for an organization where the board measure the CEO. But right now, people are not interested in productivity. What people are interested in is cutting costs and improving cash flow. Any organization in crisis, the CFO and the CEO are thinking about how do we cut costs? How do we improve cash flow? So productivity improvements, efficiency gains, they are not enough to carry the day. It's the strength of the business case it's the strength of the commercial value of what you offer your clients that will determine A, whether you're getting any engagement, uh, but at a secondary level, it'll determine whether they're going to actually buy something from you. Uh, so really, really important. Let me talk about three client expectations that have been around for quite a while now, uh, but they've come into greater focus. When we spring out of the bushes, in social media or on the phone, and again, get back on the phone, when we spring out of the bushes to have a conversation with somebody we don't know, before we get to ask them even one question, they expect us to truly know them. And based on truly knowing them, they expect us to tailor the conversation and the content so that it's hyper relevant. Sending somebody a case study that they don't think is relevant to them is an epic fail. Uh, talking about other organizations that you're helping that they don't feel are relevant to them won't work for you. So we need to tailor and personalize things for them. Uh, that's been the case in the, in the B2C world for a long time. People expect that in business to business now. And the third thing is based on those two things, they expect us to be mind readers. They expect us to anticipate what is important. So on that previous slide, I'm giving you a clue. If you want to talk the language of leaders and elevate into the C-suite, right now they're thinking, how do we cut costs how do we improve cash flow? So if you can speak to that, you've got a reason to have a conversation with them. And people will never say what you're seeing on the screen, but it's what they're thinking. If they don't know you, they're immediately thinking, you know, first of all, who are you and what do you want? But then they're thinking, look, I'm not interested in you and what, you're, you, and what you do. Uh, what do you think that you can do for me? How do you think I can improve my results? That's the basis on which people will engage with us. So when you think about talking the language of leaders, 
you're not talking the language of leaders unless you're talking about results they care about and results that can be measured in terms of dollars or percentages. And the really important thing here is you need a worthwhile point of view about how they can improve results and you need to position it positively. One of the biggest mistakes that anybody can make in an environment like now is to start playing back to people a whole lot of negativity as if it's going to motivate them. People know things that are tough right now. So don't call people up and say, hey, you know, with the coronavirus and with 3 million people being laid off in the last week in the US or with all this happening in your industry, they know all of that's happening. Just say, hey, look, with everything going on, I think there's an opportunity for you to improve and then talk about what you think the better result is that they can drive. You'll see this when we talk about creating a narrative, that is you create a narrative, they need to be the hero of the story, not us. Uh, that's critically important. So before we jump into that, let me just give you a couple of laws of selling or sales truths. And the first is, as we seek to elevate in tough times, to get to the people that really control funds and make decisions, political and economic power in organizations, we need to uh, understand the law of delegation. And the law of delegation is this, we are delegated away or down to those that it sounds like we deserve to be speaking with. So if you talk about your product, they'll want to delegate you to someone that evaluates product. Um, the really important thing is that you talk about their outcome. So stop talking about our attributes and our product and start talking about them. If you get in selling early questions about price or you get uh, questions about comparing us with competition, it's usually because we were talking about ourselves. The way to avoid all of this is to talk about their business case, the commercial value of change. So talk about their outcomes, not our attributes and lead with value in the conversation rather than adopting a friending strategy. Now, again, I'm not saying that relationships aren't important. It's impossible for any seller to be successful unless we can build relationships of trust. It's impossible unless we do that. But for the people that don't know us yet, that aren't doing business with us yet, they're not looking for more suppliers. They're not looking for more tech in the stack. If you sell tech, um, they're not looking for more people who consume their time. Right? The people that do know you, you know, they value that relationship. But if they don't know us yet, we've got to provide value in the conversation as a way of earning the relationship. Don't lead with a friending strategy uh, and cheesy rapport building techniques. It just won't work in this environment. Mm -hmm.